Hey guys, I'm here with Erica Mendez, um, a voiceover actress. Um, she's done a bunch of different anime and video game work. And so I'm going to hand the microphone over, let her give a little bit of rundown of some of the work that she's done that you guys might have heard of. Hey, uh, I do most of my work in anime, so a bunch of people remember me from uh, things like Kill a Kill. I play Ryuko Matoi. Um, right now on Toonami, Hunter x Hunter is playing, and I play Gon. I play Nico in Love Live, um, Deanne in Seven Deadly Sins, Yuki Kono in Sword Art Online, and I'm the new voice of Sailor Uranus and Sailor Moon. That's some of the bigger stuff I think people know me for. Uh, cool. So, um, how did you get into this business? What attracted you to voiceover acting? And I mean, be honest, was it just like, I need a paycheck? Or was it like, I really like voices and impressions? And um, what brought you into it? What uh, got you into the world of voiceover acting? I am a huge fan of anime and video games, and I have been for a very long time, and like regular animation stuff too. Um, and once you kind of realize that there are people that do these voices behind the characters, and you start recognizing the voices, so like you'll hear um, like Frank Welker, who does the voice of Fred from Scooby Doo, also plays Scooby Doo now. And once you kind of realize that that's the same person in the same show, even. That's like so crazy and people getting paid for that is even crazier of an idea. So I just kind of like, I don't know, took to that. Um, I became interested in it, it and looked it up online and started finding other people that were also interested in it. So I uh, did some like fan projects with them for a few years and then I kind of like, I never thought it'd be an actual career for me because um, I didn't know if I was ever going to be good at enough for it but uh, lo and behold like I just kind of went for it one day uh, moved from Chicago to Los Angeles and uh, within a year of living there I had a lot of friends um, from the online communities that knew that I did it so they would like recommend me for things and slowly but surely it just kind of happened after that and taking classes with people and stuff yeah Sweet. Um, was this, uh, like, mainly the anime, because that's primarily what you do the voiceover work for, were you a huge anime nerd before you started doing the voice work, or did it start to come afterwards? Were you doing the voices and then looking at some of the source material and, like, geeking out over it? Do you even like it now? Is Are, are you here and you're just like, oh my god, all these nerds are making me say all these things. What is your feeling about that? Has it always been there? Do you like it now? What's your feeling about anime? Yeah, I've liked anime since I was like 12 or 13. Um, I watched the old Toonami block on Cartoon Network. Some of my favorite shows on it were um, Outlaw Star and uh, Gundam Wing and, you know, a little bit of like Tenchi Muyo here and there. And, and um, I can't even remember anything else that was on it because it was just so long ago. But uh, yeah, I, I, I've loved it for so long and being in the industry and being able to work on that stuff, I think is really amazing. And I mean, I loved anime so much that I would go to these conventions and I went to my hometown convention in Chicago, Anime Central, uh, which is cool because I was actually there like two weeks ago and I got to be a guest at my hometown convention. Um, so that was pretty amazing, but I totally understand like all this stuff. I don't think anybody's a nerd or like a dork for, for liking it. Um, I'm just really happy that now there's so many more people that, you know, people who are fans of anime can relate to. Cause I remember when I was getting into anime, there was like barely anything on the shelves and barely anybody knew what anime was. So it's so cool that this many people at huge conventions like Anime Next get together and can find common interest and like dress up as the characters and cosplay is so cool. Like I really love cosplay and, and going to panels and stuff like that. So I think it's all really cool. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think conventions just bring a lot of different people together, a lot of different nerds together. And shameless plug for our own website, Geekade. That's what we're here for, whatever your geek is. Um, but what I was, um, what I was going to ask was, um, what was I going to ask? Um, um, so, do you find that you get recognized now when you come to? Uh, to these conventions are people recognizing you do they recognize your voice are you ever talking and they recognize you as something do they know who you are beforehand or like what's what's that like when you come to a convention like this um in most cases i usually don't get recognized especially at the bigger cons because there's so much to do at these smaller cons i'll get more people that recognize me because i mean if they're not doing like one thing they're probably at my panel because there's fewer rooms but um, 
I like to go in the dealer's hall in the artist alley and shop a lot at these things. Um, so every once in a while I get people who are like, oh my God, that's like, that's Erica Mendez. She's just like walking around. Like that just happened a few hours ago actually here. Um, and they didn't bother me, which is kind of cool, but like I don't mind if they do, you know, because I've had people that'll be like, hey, I really love your work. Can I take a picture with you in the dealer's hall? And I'm like, sure, that's fine. Like I, yeah, it's. It's pretty easy for me because I look so average, like an average anime fan. I'll wear like these dorky shirts and I just totally blend in. And I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> right? You're one to talk, okay? <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, it's just really easy for me to blend in. And I don't mind being recognized. I don't mind not being recognized. It's all cool. I'm just here to have fun and talk to people. So Now for you, are there like guests here that you geek out over that you just go nuts for like oh I never thought I would see this person or hear this person or anything like that I know a lot of the people now that are at this convention so I don't geek out quite as much over them but um, like I was kind of just saying in my panel that I just had I uh, went to a convention with Scott McNeil uh, Travis Willingham Nolan North and Laura Bailey all in one and that was like intimidating because I got to do a panel with them and I'm just like the kind of the small fry on the panel so it's just me like watching everybody else ask Nolan North and Scott McNeil questions I know like but it was just so cool because it's kind of like having I don't mind when people don't ask me questions on things like that because it's like having the best seat in the house so I just sit there and like listen to these people's stories because they've been in the industry for so long and and I learn a lot you know just being up there with those people but Sometimes it's it's hard not to nerd out, but I try I try not to as much as possible because I'm still trying to be professional, you know. All right, now how do you feel when we're we're gonna have to get to some love live stuff? Um, it is the thing right now, and you can see what my girlfriend is dressed up as. Um, when you come to a convention like this, is it weird to see like? all these people dressed as a character that you voiced is it weird for you to go into like you said the dealer's room and just walk through but like we walked through and there's love live everywhere everybody has something love live what's that experience like obviously you've done other work and i'm sure you see that too but every booth we're going to there's nico there's more love live stuff so how does that feel seeing that does that give you any sort of sense of like oh my god like i'm part of that or how do you, how do you feel it definitely feels really good and not just because like i'm a part of the show specifically like i sometimes i don't think about that necessarily but I, more of what i think about is do i have this already can i buy this right now do i have enough money in my pocket uh, i actually have a bunch of eco stuff that i bought today i've got like little pins um sometimes i buy prints and i'll not hang them up because I don't have enough room, but I'll buy them because I love supporting local artists. Um, I've got figures, uh, tons of figures, way too many figures. Um, I've spent so much money on merchandise for not just Nico, but all of my characters. Because it's really cool to like say that you have a figure of yourself, I guess, kind of. Um, but And then seeing cosplayers, I don't like to tell them who I am in most cases. And most of the time they won't recognize me. But uh, one of the last cons I was at, I was invited to the Love Live photo shoot um, because a friend of mine cosplays as my favorite Love Live character, Katori. And uh, she's like, hey, you should come to this and like surprise everybody. And so me and the uh, voice actress for Nozomi went and she, my cosplay friend introduced us. And I didn't realize like the dub was as well received as it was because it's still sort of fairly newer. It's only within the next, the, the last few months. And there was maybe two dozen girls there and they all screamed and it was insane. And it, I kind of felt embarrassed because I was like, oh, this many people like are glad that I'm here. Like I just wanted to come and take pictures of people and they all wanted to take pictures of me and have me do the Nico Knee thing. And uh, it was really cool. Like I really get excited about all that. Now, how did, did, did you see this coming? Did you see like Love Live? Like you said, well received, but like it's kind of like exploded loaded and do you think it's gone past the market that it seemed intended for which was like kind of like teenage high school girl sort of thing because as a 32 <clears throat> year old guy um, whose girlfriend forces him to watch anime and, and he enjoys it but I watched Love Live and I was like 
I kind of enjoy this, but this is kind of so weird that I'm watching this. Like, did you expect it to kind of blow up the way it's blown up? Like as many people around here know it and love it as like much as they do? Or did you expect it? Did you have any expectations? Did you think that like it was just like, okay? And what did you think was going to happen with it when you accepted it and started doing the voices? Well, when I was talking about like not expecting the reception it got, I was specifically talking about the dub. Like I knew Love Live was a huge thing because I was into it a year and a half before I auditioned for it. Um, so being in it was like really intimidating. And I, I mean, as far as like guys liking it, it's kind of like the My Little Pony effect in a way, I feel like, where it's intended for a certain audience, but it's so good that anyone is able to enjoy it. And I think that's what makes a good series if people are able to look past the, the labels that shows may be given for other people. Um, but I think it's great that guys love it. And I think, I, I feel like I see a lot more guys like sporting the merchandise than girls. And I think that's so cool that people are able to, you know, um, kind of like reject the social norms of what you would expect guys to like in this case. But I don't know, I think it's really neat. Awesome. Um, and apparently I'm totally in Umi. So you guys who don't, yeah, um, I, I am Umi apparently, and I'm absolutely fine with that label. Um, all right. A couple, just a couple of final questions. Um, like as far as like the convention circuit goes, um, what are, is this like one of the bigger conventions that you've been to? Do you get out to a lot of anime conventions? Are there other ones that you go to? Because, um, you know, this was not, this is the first year it's in Atlantic City and you know we needed the big space so like in Somerset it was like we're Anime Next was outgrowing that um, is this like a big convention for you uh, I know you talked about other conventions you've been to what's the circuit like for you like where else do you go and what's the reception like when you go there yeah I've actually been doing a lot of conventions in the past two years I think last year I did like 15 ish this year I'm at the end of the year I'll have about 16 17 um, I love them, so it's it's hard to say no. So then I end up get like overworking myself. Um, I've had three conventions in a row before, which is really intense, and I'm really tired af at the end of it. But like I said, I really enjoy it, so it, it's not really a big deal to me. I love coming to them and talking to people. Um, this it's weird because like I know this is one of the bigger conventions across the the states, but it because this this place is beautiful like I love the the event center that they're at now not that I saw the Somerset one but because it's so big it feels like there's not quite as many people here which is kind of nice even though it's a big event but uh, I think I want to say the biggest one I've been a guest at was probably Oticon in Baltimore and they've gotten so big that they're moving venues next year so um, all right, well, just to wind down, um, what are the plans moving ahead? I mean, do you have any projects that you're working on or that are coming up that you're trying to work on that you can speak about? Um, I mentioned earlier I'm going in Hunter Hunter, and that's on Toonami right now. Um, I should be coming up in the next few episodes of Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans, which is also on Toonami right now. I play Cracker in that. And uh, I just got to announce that I'm in Atelier Sophie. I play Leon in that, and that's a cool, like, kind of chill game about alchemy and crafting which is kind of neat but those are the most recent things I think other than um your line April I play Subaki and that's all on Netflix and it's really it's a sad series but it's really beautiful and and touching and I am glad that that's being you know watched now that it's on Netflix so it's really cool awesome well, Erica, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and sitting down with me. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later.